Hello and welcome to the Liz Experiment YouTube channel. This is the channel where I record field notes from my journey towards architecting my best life. And I am here still in Warsaw, Poland, um, house sitting, pet sitting for my dear friends who are on vacation. And I've learned a whole lot and worked on a whole lot this week, despite not really leaving the neighborhood. So um, yeah, let's, let's just jump right into it. What is the first thing that I learned this week? So, okay. By now, if you've been watching the channel, you know that sometimes I learn things, but most of the things I learn are actually things that I've learned before and that I just remember. And I think that happens to all of us, but I'll take this one for the team. So here's something that I um, remembered slash learned, uh, became reacquainted with, which is the fear of um, getting new work as a consultant uh, never goes away. I've heard it a million times before. I've been consulting for over 10 years. Um, I felt it uh, multiple times throughout the year for over 10 years, and that just never, ever goes away. Um, which is why I've now become obsessed with trying to figure out passive uh, income streams, my business partner as well, so that I don't have to continuously be looking for new clients. But <laughs> More on that on the what I'm worked on this week section of the of the show. Yeah, that's the word for it. The second thing I learned this week is how much I love fall. Again, I remembered. I I um it's turning fall here in Warsaw just slightly. Like it's still uh summer ish, but you can kind of feel the crisp crispness in the air and start to uh, just smell the fall smells. And you know, I grew up in the northeast of the United States. I I'm used to the trees changing and all that stuff. And I didn't have that last year. So um, I was in California, that's right, uh, last year, pet sitting, I, I believe. So um, I just got reacquainted with that feeling of fall and I, and I remembered how much I loved it. The third thing that I learned um, was, well, it's kind of hard to live in a country where you don't know the language. Um, and I know I talked about this a little bit last week, but... I guess the realization I came to is as I go forward traveling, um, it would be helpful to maybe target English speaking or Spanish speaking countries. Not that I know a ton of Spanish, but I've taken way more Spanish than I have, say, Polish or Hungarian, right? Which I haven't taken any of that. Um, like coming to some place where you don't know the language for vacation is, is fine because you're probably going to be in more touristy areas. But for long-term stays, it's probably not. Now, I would come back to my friend's place a hundred times over. I love that I'm helping them out. Their neighborhood is great. People are nice. Like, it doesn't, it's not really um, a bother to me as much as I as it was in the beginning. Because in the beginning, you're just kind of like, what's going on? I'm happy I'm here and I'm glad to be here. And I'm glad I have a little bit more time here, like a week and a half or two weeks or something. I just am thinking about uh, making note of how I choose places going forward, maybe exploring more of that so that also I can work on and learn more Spanish and get better at it. So I started kind of ruminating about, oh, maybe I'll head more to like South America, Central America next year in the time, in the, with the time I have. So more on that. Um, and then the last thing I learned was I started reading for, I'm, I'm part of a book club with my friends, and we started reading Carl Jung's uh, autobiography, Memories, Dreams, and Reflections. And it's fascinating to read his experiences that he had as a young boy, um, because, or at least his reflections and his dreams and his memories, and reading through him, going through those, because I thought I had similar thoughts and dreams and reflections as a kid. Um... And I thought that made me weird. I'm doing this because I'm like, I'm not Carl Jung, trust me. I don't think that I'm like some superior mind. But it's more that um, I think we all have these types of experiences uh, that are weird in our head, right? That society can't explain, especially as kids. You have a scary dream. Um, and that dream is a piece of all of the things that are happening around you and you can't put it together. And you know what? Your parents can't either because they weren't in the dream, first of all. Second of all, because they're not Jungian analysts. Um, so it was really cool. And it's, I look forward to continue reading the book because it's really interesting to 
listen to his experiences and, and, and his reactions to them, especially him growing up in a Catholic family and wanting to be like a good Catholic, but like kind of being like, wow, that's some, that's some effed up shit that doesn't quite jive. All of those things are kind of coming together. And I'm like, yay, I'm not as weird as I thought. And I'm saying this because I want you to know that you probably have these memories, dreams, and reflections too of your own. And they don't make you weird. They just make you you. Um, I, oh, I said that was the last thing I learned. But I have one more thing here on my list. So I had, um, I took Jack out for the morning walk. And our morning walk is really great. Uh, we usually go around this pond and they're usually like these fishermen. I think I mentioned that in a previous video. And as we were coming back inside, I had this moment where I recognized, and I've talked about this on the channel before, but I recognize like I give so much of my energy to making sure other people, pets, whatever, are, are happy and good and taken care of. And what if I, what would happen if I took all of that and put it towards myself? Um, what would happen with, what would happen with my life? How far could I get? And this is especially in regards to thinking about my business and, and making a passive income streams for myself and trying to make myself financially independent, but also just in general, like how, what would I do at the time? And, and how would I make my own life better? Uh, if I wasn't trying to divert all my energy to others, um, I think that's a, that was a big, I'm still in the midst of that reflection. It was only a couple hours ago, so. Hold on to your hats. So what did I work on in regards to all these lessons learned? Well, the first thing that I worked on, the fear of finding work doesn't go away lesson. Um, Diana, my business partner, and I, um, our company is called CX by Design. And we started working on trying to find our ideal clients. We have a theory of who we want to work with. Um, and we want to see if these people exist. And we haven't had much progress and that's been really deflating, which is why I think the whole fear of being able to find clients has come up. So what I worked on was, was continuing with that and, and trusting my gut and my theory, but also being flexible if it's not workable and letting go of the results. It's going to be what it's going to be. As long as I keep my intentions pure, which are to do good work with companies that and businesses and business people who care about what they do, who are trying to, who are passionate about the, what they do and want to do good business. As long as I keep that in mind, um, things will shake out. It's it's going to it's going to be okay. So that's a hard one, but that is what I've been working on. The other thing is I keep remembering I've been doing this consulting stuff for ten plus years. I haven't had a full-time job since 2008, since the collapse of 2008, um, and I've been fine. I've been more than fine. I've always done better than than what I did when I was working full-time. So um, as long as I keep my mind and heart pure and focused, I will uh, manifest. That's just how it works. And this is related to a blog post I released this week um, in regards to I think I titled it how owning my mindset cultivates my reality. So I'll put a link to that in the, in the uh, description area. So you guys can check that out. What I worked on in regards to my love for fall was really enjoying my walks with Jack. So I take him on a few walks a day and one of them is about 45 minutes to an hour. We either walk around uh, the neighborhood or I take him to the dog park. I usually will t go to the park in general for some time. And that's where I'm really getting the, like the smells and the feels of fall. And I'm just letting my mind and body and heart enjoy that. Um, of course, along with that comes this longing to be back on the East Coast, especially in the Northeast. And I just recognize that for a longing of, for what it is. You know, I do miss my friends and family and the people I love there. I do miss fall there. But on a deeper level, I think it's me wanting to be back in the comfort in, in my comfort zone. And that's because I'm very much not in my comfort zone when I'm in a foreign place, right? So I just keep that in mind. Um, I do miss apple cider, but I'm sure I can find that here because this is an apple loving country. I learned the word for apple in Polish. Halbico? Uh, hal, hal, I need my, I need my Duolingo to make sure I said that right. Um, but anyway, uh, so that's, um, yeah, missing fall, missing apple cider. So in regards to what I worked on with traveling and kind of thinking about 
go in my long, longer term stays, staying in either Spanish or English speaking uh, countries, I have been working on being comfortable here because I'm here and it's awesome. Like, um, so I've just been owning my mindset around that and, and adapting and it's working. You know, I feel way more comfortable. Obviously I've been here for a few weeks. So, um, but I listened to p- local Polish radio stations. I started, um, working through some Polish on Duolingo and I know I'm not going to learn Polish or know how to speak Polish, but I've just been trying to, um, you know, expose myself to as much of the people, language and culture as I can to make my time more awesome and and adaptable. So, um, and to make the language itself just feel more approachable, even if I never will understand what's going on, I will be able to buy an apple though. I will be able to buy an apple. Uh, I also noticed how I really don't care too much anymore that I don't speak it. So that's been pretty cool. Like, you know, it's, I don't have as much as the vulnerability and like, (gasps) Are they going to not uh, listen to me because they don't speak English? And it's just whatever. We're people and and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fine. And so the last thing I worked on in regards to reading Carl Jung's Memories, Dreams, and Reflections were noticing my own memories, dreams, and reflections and, and letting them just come up, you know, not pushing them away um, whenever they appear. Uh, you know, I'm not sure where that one will go, but I, you know, as I read the book, I'm just kind of letting that stuff happen. Whereas before, especially as a child, I'd be like, no, don't be weird. Don't be weird. Everybody else is normal. Don't be weird. You are not weird. We are not weird. We have memories, dreams, and reflections for a reason. Um, so let them come to pass. And then in regards to uh, where, what would I do with my energy if I didn't divert it, divert it, divert, divert it to others? Yeah, we'll see where that one takes me. You know, that one... That one's a mind, like a mind blown, um, even though I've said it before on the channel. Uh, But I do, I want to see where it will take me, especially in regards to my travels and my business and even my friendships and relationships. I do want to start to, you know, focus more on what do I want out of this life? Because as we do that, we're not, it's not, it is selfish, but that selfishness doesn't mean other people don't benefit. So with that... Let's see what happens in the coming week. When I come back to you next week, I will still be here in Warsaw, um, still pet sitting, and hopefully I'll know the word for orange because then I can say apple and orange. Bad joke. Um, If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Disregard the bad joke. Give it a thumbs up. If you have some of your own lessons learned or things you were working on, I would love to hear about it in the comments. I don't get many comments, maybe because, um, I don't know, maybe because the videos aren't that good or maybe you just don't have much to say, but I would love to hear what you think in the comments. And if you want to get these videos in your inbox each week, please subscribe. It lets me know that what I'm doing is helping. So until next week, thank you so much for watching.